morning. Huh. The sun is so bright outside. I opened my eyes and tried to get up from the bed, but the muscles in my body hurt like hell. That's hurt. That hurts. Molly, are you awake? Albert was sleeping on the edge of the bed, holding my hand the entire time. You know, he's going back and going, don't worry, this is, whole, this is wholesome now. Don't worry, don't worry about the murder, by the way. And like, apparently Molly is like, the range, you know, and she needs to have uh, blood transfusions in order to stay sane, apparently. I don't know. Albert, why am I here? Looking at the tape on his face, the events of last night played out in my head like a walking light. My memory is still blurred. But the image of Albert being wounded is the only one that is very clear. Hey. I immediately hugged the man before me, fearing he was just a hallucination on my part. Oh great, you're alive. Uh, my back, it hurts, it hurts. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. I'm terrified. I, I, or I was terrified, I thought I lost you. Oh, calm down, my girl. I'm stronger than you think. Because you were stabbed and I was so scared that I fainted. I was just a little scratched, you know? Apparently she doesn't remember her killing spree, by the way. Really? Did you get it checked out properly? Are there any of the, inju any of the injuries? I'm fine. It's just that my handsome face is scratched. Do you hate me because of this? Are you kidding me? You're still handsome. What did you say? Nothing. By the way, I don't remember what happened after you were stabbed. You don't remember anything. Yeah, I, I was really shocked. Well, how do you leave after that? Well, I stood up and fought back. You're such a big dummy. Why didn't you just run away when you were hurt? Because they hurt my baby. Baby. I forget it. But what about afterwards? Are they still hurting you? Oh, how can they hurt me? You forgot that I was trained as a child, right? Also, they're dead. <laughs> you know, they're six feet under, but don't worry about it. I have forgotten that Albert, a descendant of the Claus family, has been go undergoing rigorous training with his brother since childhood to protect himself. You know, apparently... Despite his B shown in look, you know, apparently he has just six pack abs and gigantic biceps, you know, supposedly. He has a Giga Chad physique, physique. Uh, you know, despite being like a typical B shown in, you know, feminine boy. But anyway, uh, I knocked them out and handed them over to the police. You, know, you, you don't say. More like you handed them, you know, you handed them to the morgue. Uh, I'm super relieved you aren't injured again. I breathed a sigh of relief, but immediately felt self-conscious. It's my fault for trusting people too quickly and not listening to you properly. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have attended the gathering. How can it be your fault? That bitch crossed the line. My heart vaguely tingles when I think about what Sharon said to me last night. Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I never knew I was being hated. They hated me so much that they needed to do all these horrible things. Hey, Albert. Am I that annoying? Of course not. How can you be annoying? You're the most gentle and kind person I've ever met in the world. Although, a little naive, you're the cutest. Don't listen to that crazy guy. They're just jealous of you. Humans are so ugly. Well, except me. <laughs> except me. Albert, why don't you tell me about my bullying? I didn't want you to get hurt. But you don't have to stand up for me. You'll also get resented, right? I don't care what people think. The only thing I care about is your feelings. I just want you to smile at me. He said with a relaxed look, as if it was a matter of course. In addition, as a member of the Islander family, it would be so, much, it would be so shameful that I cannot even protect the people beside me. Am I really worth this? Of course. You're the most important person in my life. What? Stop playing around. I'm being serious. I've liked you since the old days. You're my one and only one. Uh, my brain went blank and the temperature of my face gradually rose. Molly, look at me. Do I look like I'm joking? Like the Joker from Batman? You know? Why so serious? Now, Albert's eyes looked straight at me. I'm sure that he was not joking. I always cared about you. Why? Why do you like me? I don't know, because you're the protagonist of this game. No, I'm... All of it. Albert came close to me. I love what you do for me. The chocolate milk you make for me. All your looks and your voice. I love all everything about you. So, Molly, do you love me too? He leaned close to my ear and whispered. My brain was instantly softened into a calm flower. Answer me. Dagakoto aru. Nah, save the game. Alright, well, you know. Basically, uh, 
I mean, I don't know. Like, basically, he's been helping us this entire time. He's a little bit misunderstood, I guess. You know, it seemed like he's just a creepy stalker. But, like, Albert was really just trying to help us from behind the scenes. But when you think about it, isn't that a little manipulative? And I feel like, you know, doing everything behind the scenes to make him, you know, look good, basically. Um, so, you know, what if we just keep silent? I wanted to answer, but mine was so confused that I couldn't even make a sound. Do I like Albert too? Oh, you don't have to say anything. I know about your feelings. Molly, you're so cute. Okay, I feel like that didn't matter, I guess. Albert moved his body back to the bed and looked at me with joy. Let's go on a date on Christmas Eve, shall we? Date? Yeah. I hope our first day was the day to remember. What do you think? You said our first day. Yes, first day of relationship. You know, we didn't even consent to this yet, but apparently we're in a relationship already. Have we already confirmed our feelings for each other? My brain is again in disarray, unable to say half a word. <laughs> well, it looks like my baby needs some time to digest. My baby. <laughs> I don't know how that's translated. Anyway, uh, he gently stroked my red and face with a smug smile. I'll take that as a promise and be ready for Christmas. You just stay here and get well. Where are you going? Oh, some things still need to be finished. Alright. What, you already miss me? A little. Albert looks surprised and happy as if he heard something unique. Molly. I really didn't know you're so good at pampering. Are you trying to seduce me? I feel excited. What should I do? I don't want you to leave you alone. Mwah. Okay. Albert gave me a light kiss on the forehead. I'll be back soon. Be good and wait for me. If you need anything, just talk to Greg or call me. Okay. I watched Albert's figure disappear behind the door. My heart still beating fiercely because of what had just happened. Or what had just happened. So, Albert and I are now a couple? Before I came here, I hadn't expected to go this far with him. I thought we would always be a little closer than friends. Although I did have a crush on him, I didn't think Albert would have such strong feelings for me. Not to mention that he's done so much for me. I'd like to do something for him if I could. What do you mean when he said he liked what I did for him? I decided to walk around the house to clear my mind. Although my body still hurts, walking around a little should be fine. No one's there. Is everyone resting? A figure flashed on the other side of the corridor. Hmm? Who's there? It's me. It's me! Come here. Who is talking? I looked around, but there's no one in sight. I don't think I'm hallucinating after I fainted yesterday, right? I'm here. Although I couldn't see clearly, a red figure was on the other side of the corridor. Who are you? Come and catch me. Wait, I recognize that voice. I heard that sound the first night I came here. As expected, a red hat appeared on the floor of the corridor. The Christmas Butcher. His name comes to my mind. No way. Why is it appearing here? Maybe it's a thief from somewhere, but this is Claus's home, where security is tight, and no outsiders are likely to enter. I decide to follow the suspicious figure. Wait a minute! It looked like it wanted to play ghost hunting with me and jump down the stairs as fast as it could. Stop it! But my muscles don't listen to me, and my body hurts when I run. Ah. Ah. When my body was about to fall down, somebody held my body. Are you okay? Uh, who is it? Alright. Okay. Uh, another B Shonen? A rival, maybe? I don't know. A familiar figure caught my eye. Oh, huh. Liam, I guess. It's you, Molly. He's... Brother Liam? Oh, okay. Liam Claus. He is Albert's second brother. I used to see him when he came, uh, when I came to Albert's house. It's been a long time. You've grown up a lot. You've become so mature too, brother Liam. Liam Nissan. Liam Neil Liam Nielsen? Is that? I think that's a, like a an actor, right? I don't know. I don't. I don't know movies, but I feel like Liam Nielsen. I think that is a name of a celebrity. I think. I don't know, actually. Anyway, uh, brother Liam is still as close as ever. Although I know he's not bad, I get very nervous whenever I talk to him. Albert said that you were you went abroad. 
Are you come back early? No. I just returned to get my stuff and I'll leave later. Oh, I get it. It looks like the kid got what he wanted. What? Nothing. They're just talking to myself. Why did you run down in such a hurry? I thought I saw someone suspicious and thought I'd go after them. Suspicious people. This house wouldn't let bugs in so easily. Are you mistaken? Bugs. <laughs> Maybe I'm just too tired. You should take care of yourself. Otherwise, something will happen. And someone will go crazy. Is he referring to Albert? Oh, uh, Aethra? Aethra. Liam, you're walking too fast. Suddenly, a pink-haired girl appeared behind Liam. Hmm? Miss Aethra? 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 Uh, she's the maid who used to follow Liam. Why is this little Molly? It's been a long time. Aethra is now my fiancé. Oh, okay. You could just marry your maid. Good. What? Hey, Liam. We agreed not to disclose it first, right? Yeah, she's close to us, so there's no need to hide. I always thought their relationship was slightly different from the normal master-server relationship. They, you know, maybe they roleplay behind those doors. Anyway, um, congratulations to you two. I'm so happy to meet you again, sweetheart. You've grown up, become even more beautiful. Aethra excitedly took my hand, and she was as kind as ever. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, so does? So, is, uh, so does Miss Aethra. Mm. Huh? The scent. Her expression suddenly became a bit stunned. Mm. Why does little Molly smell like this? What? <laughs> Am I stinky? <laughs> Impossible. You're clearly human. Are you... Scent? What is she talking about? She showed a worried expression that looked so hard to explain. Miss Ethra? Ethra. I don't know how to pronounce that still. Ethra? I guess I'll say Ethra. Ethra. Liam gently patted Ethra on the back. It's okay. Ethra is just worried that you don't look too well. Uh, it's because something happened last night. You better go to rest. Don't exhaust your body. We're leaving now. So fast? Aren't you going to see Albert? We can see each other whenever we want, but we are in a hurry. Let's go, Aethra. But... I don't want to repeat myself. All right. Little Molly, I'm leaving. You must take good care of your health. Sure, you guys take care too. Also, remember to ignore that voice. It's not real, <laughs> you know, it's the voice is inside your head. Don't, don't listen to it. What? I thought it didn't explain any further. Instead, she just gave me a reluctant hug and left with Liam. What does she mean? Is there anything on me? Liam, I smelled something in Little Molly. Did you know all along? Yes, it was a long time ago. If it's not handled quickly... Don't worry, her antidote is right beside her. Uh, I guess we have an idea what that means. You know, because of what happened before. Um, I return to the room in disbelief. Although my body still hurts a little, I don't want to stay in the house like this. The figure of the suspected Christmas butcher fills my mind. I wonder if I can find something related in the library. Also, I have to go prepare a Christmas gift to Albert. Where, where am I going? We're going to the library, I guess. Let's go to library. Library, library, library. It's been a long time since I've been here, and it's gotten more prominent again. The library was, was also built by the Clauses family. Albert and I used to come here occasionally to study. It'd be nice to ask him to come here and read a book together someday. I, I almost forgot why I came. I need to find information about the Christmas Butcher soon. However, I've searched almost the entire library and there's no relevant literature, only some less credible interview reports. Oh, that's all there is to it. There should be more practical books, or is it really just my illusion, or... We keep saying illusion, by the way. In every translation, by the way, any kind of game translated uh, from Japanese or Chinese, like whatever, to like English, they always say illusion. But I think it's hallucination, not illusion. You know, it's always said we're... I always say weird to say hallucination. Anyway, uh, is it really just my uh, illusion or like, like uh, imagination rather? You know, that also works. I guess it's either hallucination or imagination, and they never use the right word. Um, anyway, 
or is it really just my imagination? Yeah, that's the right word. While I was deep in thought, I accidentally bumped into someone else. Huh. The information in my hands were scattered all over the floor. Uh, sorry, I was thinking about something. I didn't see you. Okay, <laughs> mysterious boy. Um. Uh, it's fine. The person in front of me was a boy with a school uniform who looked younger than me. This school uniform does not belong to the school in this island. Is he a traveler? He helped me pick up the paper on the floor and stare straight at me. Wow, what a beautiful face. He's simply stunning, unlike a human. Unlike a human? Well, that's kind of weird. Just a weird thing to say. Uh, thank you. Uh, looks like you're in trouble. Oh no, I just couldn't find the information I was looking for. May I ask you a question? What question? What do you think about... Does human curiosity lead to good or bad things? Why is he suddenly asking a stranger this kind of inexplicable question? It's okay if you don't want an answer. Uh, could this be his homework? Because he can't think of an answer, he has to ask someone else's opinion, right? Fine, it's just a question. Save the game. Um, let's say... Bad things? Mm, it's terrible. After all, some facts are better not to know. He closed his eyes and thought for a moment. Uh, thank you for answering my question. Then again, it's not my homework. Huh? It's for you. I finished reading it. What's this? There should be something here that you want to know. I took the picture book in his hand. The book's title is The Legendary Island, and the picture book seems very old. Although the book is incomplete, the rest is up to you. Who are you? How do you know what I want to know? As soon as I looked up, the boy in the school uniform disappeared. <laughs> you okay? Just introduce a character only for them to go away. I mean, the same with Liam, I guess, I feel like. I don't know if we're going to see a lot of Liam, I feel like. Uh, where is he going? What a strange kid. Where did this picture book come from? I forget it. Anyway, this is the only reference to see what can be done. I opened the picture book, and the text inside was handwritten in addition to the illustrations. A long, long time ago, there was a place called Mammy Island. Mammy? It's a small island with beautiful scenery, re uh, rich resources, and most importantly, a habitat for mermaids near the coast. The mermaids on Mammy Island could translate into human form, and some of them uh, went to the human cities to experience human life. One day, a wealthy businessman wandered onto the island and was rescued by one of the mermaids. The businessman is getting better with the care of the mermaid, or was getting better with the care of the mermaid. And soon after, the two fell in love and had their child. The man decided to settle here, so he bought the island and built a residence and some constructions. And besides him and the mermaids, a few selected humans live on the island too. But to prevent the presence of outsiders who have designs on mermaids, or have designs on mermaids, or, you know, maybe have, or, you know, have like, uh, malicious, you know, ideas about the mermaids, the businessman had put in place several measures to conceal the presence of mermaids. But the happiness only lasted 10 years. A group of ice outsiders had invaded the island. Their target was the mermaids. The businessman tried to stop them from, uh, or yeah, the businessman tried to stop them and tried to protect his children and his wife. But in the end, the businessman died in the dispute. The mermaid, who was too late to stop everything, rushed to the scene, hugged her dead lover, and wept. She was so angry that she decided to use all her strength to take revenge on these selfish humans. That was a terrible curse. Just as I got to the book's most intense part, I realized it was the last page. Huh? Is this the end? What a strange story. However, I wonder what this story has to do with the Christmas Butcher. Why on earth would that student show me this? The Mammy Island described in the book is similar to Snowflake Island. But Mermaid or something, this is the first I've heard of it. Would there be a sequel to this picture book? You know, maybe it's the sequel to the game we're playing right now? I don't know, anyway. <laughs> I wonder why I'm curious about what happens after that. I took the picture book to the library counter and asked for it, but I was told it was outside the library's collection, let alone the sequel. What's wrong with this book that's not here? Did the student bring it himself? But how should I give it back to him? I walked around the library but couldn't see the student, and no one had seen him, even after asking the custodian. He hasn't left Snowflake Island, has he? 
Oh, never mind. I have to keep it for him first. The result is that I did not find anything, though. Let's go for a lock. Uh, for a lock? No. Let's go for a walk somewhere else. Where should we go? All right. Give the game and go over to the school. After what happened last night, I'm actually afraid to go back. The place that was full of good memories suddenly became very strange. When I think of all the people I thought were my best friends hating me all this time, I can't help but wonder what that time really was for me. Even so, I'd like to go again. When I returned to the entrance of my alma mater, alma mater? Still don't know if that's a real word, but I was calmer than I thought I would be. Why did I notice people hating me all that time? Is it because I was so naive? I can't imagine my school life without Albert. Albert has done so much to me, or so much to me. No, it was, uh, Albert has done so much for me to make me enjoy my school life. I can't become so vulnerable. Even after knowing the truth, this place is still full of memories of Albert and me. So I, I still don't hate this place. Hey, did you hear about Miss Sharon? A few male students happened to pass by me, and when I heard Sharon's name, I unconsciously pricked up my ears. Oh, I heard about Miss Sharon's sudden resignation from her job going abroad, right? Resignation? Going abroad? I know she quit her job suddenly, but did she indeed go abroad? Yes, I overheard her in the staff room. Uh, is that really true? <laughs> but it's not bad. I didn't like her in the first place. I know, she always looked down on the students. The boys got further ahead, away, and I couldn't hear what they were saying afterward. Sharon was arrested, wasn't she? Understandably, she resigned, but why did she get to leave the country? Or is that just a rumor? Since Albert was the one who sent her to the police station, she would need more time to get out. I shouldn't overthink it. Well, I mean, you know, we as the audience know, you know, what happened to her, but anyway. Let's go somewhere else. Okay, well. Don't worry about it. Prepare Albert's Christmas gift. I went to the shopping street and wandered around while thinking about what to get for Albert. Well, it's really hard to decide. Although we send gifts to each other every year, this year's gift had to be special. Because this is the first gift after we became a couple. Couple. I still can't believe it. I immediately blush again when I think about what Albert told me this morning. Why can he say such things so easily? Damn. Was... Was... Uh, did he have this charm before? Why does he like me so much? Well... Calling. The phone suddenly rang and my heart skipped a beat when I saw the caller ID. Why do you have... Why do you just call at such perfect timing? Hello? Ah, uh, you finally picked up. Honey, where, what, are you, what are you doing? Honey? Uh, sorry, you're not used to that yet, are you? Or do you not like it? It's not like I don't like it. Oh, so you're shy? How cute. Hey, so where are you now? I went out for a walk. A walk? Hey, didn't I tell you to take a good rest? Or to, to rest, I guess? Uh, it looks like someone's being naughty. I went out because of you. Me? Did you miss me so much that you came to look for me? It's not like that. Then what is it? I'll be home soon, so don't worry too much about it. Hmm. Alright. What about you? Where have you been? I'm a little far away. How far is it? Is it something important? A uh, secret, secret. It's not something dangerous, is it? Your body's so injured. Of course not, my dear. Don't worry. Ah, huh. I need to go. See you tonight. Well, bye-bye, my honey. You know, he's busy, like, burying the bodies. You know, I imagine. Maybe? I don't know. Uh, it's just a change of appellation. What the? What, what is appellation? What the heck is appellation? <laughs> it's a weird word to use, I feel like. Uh, appellation. A name or title. An appellation is a legally defined and protected geographical indication primarily used to identify where the grapes for a wine were grown? Although other types of food often have appellations as well. What? I don't understand how this is used in this sentence. What a, what a weird... You know, what a weird... Um, translation. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's, maybe she's saying like it's a, it's just a change of pace? Maybe? I don't know if it still makes sense though. Anyway. Uh, my heart almost can't take it. What will happen afterward? It's a change of appellation. I guess, oh no, she's referring to their relationship. You know, it's just a change of... What they're calling the relationship, I guess, what she's meaning, right? Again, it's kind of weird, weird to use appellation or whatever. 
Anyway, uh, the thought of going out with Albert for the first time made my heart flutter of excitement. I need to calm down. I should decide on Albert's Christmas gift. The things he'd like. A sporting goods? Because Albert is particularly fond of and good at water sports. But he already has many of them. I've given them as a gift to him before. Games? We play a lot of games together. He loves horror games. <laughs> you don't say. However, it's not as suitable as a gift for the first date. But how about me? <laughs> no, no, no. It's too embarrassing to treat yourself as a gift. Uh, a chocolate milk. You know, chucky milk. But I can't just give him chocolate milk, right? 100 cups of chocolate milk? Uh, no, no, no. How could he possibly drink it? Uh, what should I do? Hmm... Oh yes, there's one more thing besides chocolate milk. But that takes a lot of space and it's easy to find out if I'm doing it in his house. What if I do at the cafe? I had the key he gave me. I remember Arbor saying that everything inside was refurbished and ready to use. Alright, let's buy some materials and go see them. Alright, I'm assuming we're gonna make something instead. Hello? Wow, it's really the same as before. And not a bit of dust. I'm thankful that Albert did find something to clean every day. I tried to open the machines I wanted to use and they all worked. In that case, let's get to work. Let's finish it before Christmas. Ooh, so tired. You know, it took like, you know, two seconds uh, for the viewer. But I guess it took her all day, I guess. But finally, a large part of it is finished. The rest can be done tomorrow. A kind of weird transition. I mean, I guess, I guess you know, everything turned to evening time. And I, again, I feel like the game is a little bit rough in terms of trying to like, communicate like time passing, you know, just small things like that. You know, I feel like if you want to like, indicate time passing, you would, um, I don't know, you either like cut to a different scene or you would transition to black, you know, and then come back. You know, I feel like that would transition time as well. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Um, I look at my phone. It was already nighttime. Oh no, it's already so late. I have to go back quickly. I quickly organized my kitchen and flew back to Albert's house. Literally, I spread my wings and flew away. When I returned to Albert's house, he was nowhere to be found. Are you still out there? <laughs> Angry face. Uh, my baby. Yes, I'm still outside. Crying face. But I'll be back soon. Eat first if you're hungry. Don't worry. I'll wait for you. Come back. Well, I'll go to the room first and wait for him. Hmm? Why is Albert's door open? I took a peek inside and it was the same as before. Speaking of which, it's been a long time since I've been in his room. In the past, we came to his house to play in his room. Why don't we sneak in to see it? It was in his room. Hmm? It's a little neater than before. I looked around there were pictures of us together in the cabinet by the wall. So nostalgic. Huh? This doll was given to him when I was in high school. And I can't believe he still keeps it. As soon as I picked up the doll, the bookcase suddenly spun. <laughs> you know, as it turns into this breath, the secret passage. Wait, what? There's a room behind the bookcase. What's going on here? Is there a secret room? Unable to resist my curiosity, I step into the hidden room. Suddenly. However, this place makes me feel uncomfortable. The whole room is covered with strange things. A large glass cabinet in the room has several blood bags and syringes hanging inside. Hmm. Whose blood is this? Then, in the center of the room, there was a console-like object filled with information and notes. There's also a thick old book. The Rules of Claw's Family. Why does the pattern on the cover look so familiar? And that picture book has the same pattern. But why? When I reached out to open the book, I accidentally touched a button on the console, and the big screen on the wall suddenly turned on. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> alright. Yeah, definitely yeah, a surveillance room. A oh, crap. Huh? How does this clip? It was a place where I was in prison last night. And I see myself. I hugged Albert's wounded body and cried so hard. I thought it would faint on the floor. Okay, well, I guess this is more like a recording. However, next second I stood up. Don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. My, eyeball, my eyeballs turned red. Beating up Sharon, big man she brought with her. Even if it's not true, that's really me. It's like a monster. You know, I literally hawked out, actually. <sighs> Why? Why would I? I fell to the ground with weak legs, and my breathing became more and more difficult. Some fragmented memories came to mind, and I remember Sharon begging for mercy, and images of flesh and blood flying around. 
No, no. Molly, that's enough. Good girl, it's time to go to sleep. Is that Albert's voice in the clip? Why? After the clip is finished, the words record the uh, ex uh, seizure appear on the screen. In a flash, I understood a lot of things. The voice, the Christmas butcher, the words of Miss uh, Ithra. No, it was me all this whole, this whole time. Kill, kill, kill. No. A sharp object stabbed me in the neck. Ah. My consciousness began to blur when a familiar voice sounded from behind me. Molly, I told you to be good to be good and wait for me to come back. Why are you not being good? Albert, why? What are you asking? You know all this, right? Yes, I know. Because I love you. Sorry for my negligence. I should not have let you run around. I collapsed helplessly into Albert's arms. Sleep again, my baby. What a giant fog. Where is this? As I was walking, I saw a familiar back. Albert? He didn't respond to me, but kept his eyes on the crying child in front of him. It was Albert as a child. At that moment, a dark figure approached the crying child. No. No way. I opened my eyes, and there was a ceiling of Albert's room. Honey, are you awake? Albert, did you sleep well? I was shocked that you fallen asleep in my room. I looked around in the daze, and my eyes fell on the doll in the bookcase. Then I remembered what had just happened. My stomach acid rushed to my heart, and nausea spread. Molly, are you alright? Stay away from me! I... I'm a monster! <sighs> Damn. The medicine needs to be stronger. Albert, you know all this, right? Why did you hide it from me? Why'd you make that clip in that room? <laughs> you know, just you know, just for a pos posterity, I guess. Recording her killing a bunch of people. That medicine. Whose blood is that? Is it true that Sharon and the others were caught? Don't tell me they're all dead. No. Wait. The disappearance of my uncle and aunt can't be related to me, right? I collapsed into a barrage of questions, and Albert just looked at me without saying a word. Albert, you know everything, don't you? Tell me. <sighs> Honey. You have too many questions. He was holding a syringe at some point. Come on, let's sleep again. Forget all the sad things. This time, I'll make sure you don't remember. Save the game. Um. Okay, fine. Yeah, whatever. You know, you know what they say. Ignorance is bliss. Whatever. Let's just go to sleep. Really? Can you really make me forget about all these things? Of course. Once you sleep. You'll forget all about it. He was smiling, but I could feel the sadness in Albert's eyes. But I don't have the energy left to care. At this moment, I'm really suffering. I hope it's all just a dream. Help me, Albert. Let me forget these horrible things. Sure. He pulled me into his arms, and the warmth of his body made me forget the pain of the syringe. It's okay. You can sleep in peace. No matter how many times, I will save you. After that, he kissed me gently. As my eyes closed, I did not notice his sad expression on his face. Two months later. Ah. Molly, good morning. Albert? I got up from the bed and my body was heavy. Did I accidentally fall asleep again? Oh, he fell asleep for like two months, by the way. Two month coma. Since Sharon kidnapped me, my body's been acting abnormally. I often unconsciously faint and fall asleep and sleep a few hours, even a day. And I forget all the things that happened when I fell down. Maybe not, well, maybe not two months straight, but I guess. Hmm. Two months ago, I collapsed in Albert's room and didn't remember anything. Even the doctor needed help finding out what the problem was. Since I was unfit to work for the time being, I had to stay at Albert's house to recuperate. I'm sorry. We just started dating and you had to take, you had to take care of me. Baby, it's fine. I love to take care of you. No matter what you become, I'll take care of you. He caressed my cheek and kissed me on the lips. Uh, my heart beat so fast that I felt like a deer was running wild. Although it's been two months since we started dating, I'm still slightly uncomfortable. Uh, you're not used to me treating you like this. No, it's just... Besides being shy, there's another thing. 
I always feel like I've forgotten something important. As a result, an invisible gap was created between Albert and me. Every time I think about it, my chest gets very upset. Albert, you don't look well. Are you anemic again? Honey, I'm fine. Is there something you're not telling me? Also, when can I go outside the house? Huh. Never mind that. Let's just kiss, I guess, make out. Also with blood, I think. But he didn't answer me. Instead, he gave me an intense kiss. He pushed his tongue in so violently that I was instantly deprived of the ability to think. My bodily lost his uh, balance momentarily, and Albert immediately grabbed my waist. Here we go again. Every time I ask him this kind of question, he does it. Don't think about such things anymore. All you have to do is look at me. I'll let you get used to it and forget all the unnecessary stuff. You're all mine. He kissed me while touching my sensitive places. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Until you get better, I'll keep doing this. What does he mean? For some reason, the air smells like sweet blood. I want more. But whose blood is that? I gave up thinking and sank into the bottomless abyss of sweetness and falsehood. Normal end. Invisible divide. Okay, well, there you go. I guess that's what happens when you choose to, like... You know? Choose to, like, uh, accept his quote-unquote treatment, you know, of amnesia. And thus the cycle, you know, continues forever, I guess. I guess... Well, what happens if we stand still? I stood still and looked at Albert. He reached out and touched my face. Oh, CG. It's hard to leave me when you finally come back. I'm just going to a party. I'll be back afterwards. Why is he giving a sad face? So you're not going to listen to me. The hand that had been on my face pinched my chin. Albert, what happened to you? Molly, why don't you understand me? I'm the only one who's really nice to you. That hurts. Albert. Ah, oh, that's cute. I'm going crazy, Molly. I grab Albert's hand and try to, uh, try to struggle. Well, you can go if you want to. He loosened his hand and gave a smirking expression. Why are you doing this? I'm just worried about you. Just don't come back too late. That's it. Have fun tomorrow. Okay, so this is to be the same, actually. Okay. Daga, Kotoaru. No, I don't want this. I reflexively shook off the syringe in Albert's hand, and bright red fluid leaked, staining the sheets. Whose blood is that? Hey, Molly, be a good girl, can you? And why don't you answer my questions? I don't know what method you use. This is not the first time, right? Are you going to let me sleep again and forget everything? Yeah, so you don't become miserable. His words were a, a tacit... A tacit? Tacit? I don't, I don't know why I can't say that word. His words were a tacit acknowledgement the fact that I was a monster. So it's all true. I became that monster and took Sharon and the others. Molly, listen to me. I'm not listening. Stay away from me. I pushed him away and held my head in my hands. Oh my god. What have I done? Why'd you hide it from me? Why did you stop me? Is that what you, what you said you would deal with me? Is that what you, is that what you said? Or or is that why is that why you said or is, I, I don't know I can't read the sentence for some reason. Is that what you said you would deal with during the day? So I'm the monster. That's why everyone hates me. No, you're not a monster. You haven't done anything wrong. You don't have to feel sad for those bitches. <laughs> those those bitches deserved it apparently. Uh, Albert grabbed me by the shoulders. I never seen him so angry with me. Molly, I won't let you suffer anything. The people who hurt you are a fault. Even though you're getting a little crazy, you're not doing anything wrong. You know, just a little crazy. <laughs> they they would have they would have had to pay the price. Even if you didn't do it, I wouldn't have let them go. No, Albert. Why don't you just kill me? I sobbed uncontrollably as the fragmented memories caused me pain. Stop it! I'm gonna get mad if you keep saying that. He angrily grabbed a syringe full of unknown blood from his hand and was off to stab me when he stopped. Damn! He dropped the syringe on the floor and hung his head listlessly. It's enough to stab down like usual and let you sleep. You can forget everything and smile at me like you usually do. I just... 
I just want my loved ones to smile forever. Can I even do that? Fuck this curse. Albert showed an expression of pain that I'd never seen before. My heart instantly ached like a tear. Like a tear? Like a tear, maybe. I don't know. I tried to grab his hand, but he turned his head and walked away. Listen, I'm not going to let you leave here. If you insist on putting yourself in unnecessary pain, go ahead. But don't you ever leave me. You should be by my side whether you're in pain or happy. You're mine. Albert, wait. He walked towards the door without looking back and closed it with a snap, leaving me alone in a large room. Hmm. I stare blankly at the empty ceiling. I don't know how long has passed. No matter what, the image of me turning into a monster still comes to mind. Tearful. Cruel. Crazy. Why did I become like that? That feeling of residue in the hands is so scary. I can't breathe, thinking I might have done the same thing before. I've never wanted to hurt anyone, let alone kill someone. Please, how about letting me die? In any case, it's hard for me to accept all of this. I wish it was all a dream. I flexed my body and shrank to a corner. The last time I had a breakdown like this was when my adopted parents left me. Thanks to Albert being by my side, I could smile again. Why does Albert continue to hang out with me even though he knows I'm a monster? He treats me like a normal person and loves me like that. I don't know. I mean, you're like, it's more like you're like, you know, um, what was it called? Like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, sort of, you know? You're not always a monster. <laughs> or is it that he actually likes me as a monster? You know, maybe he has a weird, you know, uh, uh, yendere fetish. At that moment, I noticed a compartment in the cabinet next to the bed that was not closed. Just as I was about to turn it off, something fell down. It's an old notebook. I opened it unconsciously and immediately recognized Albert's handwriting. Is this Albert's diary? No, I can't just look at other people's privacy. A note fell from the, uh, from the diary. Only Molly and I can read this. Should I read this? Uh, yes. I believe if you, if you say no, I, I spoil myself just a little bit. But I think if you say no, you just get a normal ending again. So you get the same ending. So we'll say yes. I want to read it even more since it was written this way. You know, it makes me even more curious. Perhaps I can find out what Albert really thinks here. And at that moment, I need something to distract me. I slowly opened the diary, and the first started with the day I met him. He started to like me from that time. I thought back to the good old days we had. Ten years ago. Okay, in the high school uniform now. Uh, Molly, sorry, have you waited long? No, just for a moment. Wait, what's wrong with your face? Why are your hands wrapped in bandages too? Uh, did you get in a fight again? Yay. You dummy. Didn't I say no more fighting? Ouch, don't pinch me, it hurts. I just hit them because they said something bad. How bad is it? Did they scold you? And I should be the one teaching them a lesson. Where are they now? No, they're not scolding me. Why did you stir up trouble? Molly, I want to hug you. Yeah, you're heavy. What are you doing all of a sudden? Please don't be angry. I bought that game you want to play. Let's head, let's head home and play together, shall we? Really? Yeah, let's go. Ah. Oh, it's already so late. I'll go home soon. Are you leaving so soon? It's late. If I don't go home, I'll be scolded by Uncle Ant. What does it matter? They're not scolding you because they're worried about you. Why don't you stay overnight at my house? You're right, but... I better go back. They're my only family, even though they don't like me. I'm your family, too. Did you say something? No, there's nothing. Then I'll take you back. It's only a short distance away. I'll leave now. See you tomorrow. Molly. Why does she run off so fast? Anyway, after every time she says that, I still sneak after her, like a stalker. Uh, I hope they won't be angry today. Molly ran home, gasping her breath, and hurriedly took off her shoes. As she was about to open the door, she paused when she heard a strange conversation. Uh, okay, the aunt. Don't you think that girl is so annoying? Uh, noisy and troublesome. She pretends to be close to us even though she's not blood-related. If it weren't for the fact that outsiders wouldn't suspect her, I wouldn't have adopted her. That's right. It's a waste of her hard-earned insurance money to support her. Insurance money? What are they talking about? I wanted to kill the whole family. Tick 
the insurance money and run, but that kid survived. Oh, forget it. Let's repay the couple. They're all dead. After a while, we can send her away. What do you mean by that? Damn, what time did you come in? Tell me, was it an accident that killed mom and dad? Was that driver driving out of control because of a drug overdose? Get out of my way, useless kid. Eh. To do that kind of thing, of course, is to ask someone else to do it, but for a bit of money, you get a junkie to help you do it. You guys really did that for insurance money? What else? That money is enough for us to enjoy our love for a lifetime. You were the ones who burned down the cafe. Hey, blame them for keeping the, uh, probate? Probate and insurance manufacturing documents there. It goes without thinking they must have left that money for you. Since we can't find it, let's burn it all together. How can you do such things? Mom and Dad were so good to you. What's up? Do you want to tell the police? You have proof. Their face faces made her vomit. Molly's breathing somehow started to become rapid. The division was gradually tinged with a layer of red. Okay, you know, you saw this coming. Turns out, you know, Uncle and Aunt were assholes. You just like, I don't know, I don't know who, well, I don't know who was blood related necessarily, but uh, one of them, you know, just decided to kill their sibling for money. Just, just because, lol, I guess. I don't know. Just like despicable out of nowhere. Um, unforgivable. Unforgivable. He had a strong inner voice. Kill them. Unforgivable. How dare you? How dare you look at me like that? The man raises his hand and punches Molly in the face while she stops him before that's not hers. <laughs> he freaking punches her. What the? Molly's aunt, she, who said something wrong, tried to attack Molly, but she avoided it with her ultra instinct. Yeah. The girl named Molly relentlessly attacked the two of them, and the two adults taller than her had no power to fight back. She freaking hulked out and went Super Saiyan. Like a robot, she moved her hands without consciousness while tears flowed down her face. She did not notice what state the person in front of her was attacked to, nor did she notice Albert watching it all. Originally, he intended to make the first move. Like those guys at school who make anyone who hurts Molly pay for it. But he had no idea that Molly would suddenly become that way. You know, and, and really like, you know, and, and like it, um... I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say. I, I was just going to think, like, you know, yeah, he was instantly aroused. Anyway, no, um. Molly. Realizing it was too late, he ran to the one he liked and hugged her tightly. Stop fighting. You'll hurt yourself. Looking at an unusual face, he realized it was not the girl he used to know. You know, was that, was that a song? You know, whatever. That I used to know. Somebody. No, anyway, I don't know. I don't. I don't anyway. uh, red eyes and. The red eyes and uncontrollable. Molly, don't tell me you're from that cursed family. No. So what? He held Molly tightly again. It's okay. It's okay. Even if you become a monster, I'll always like you and stay by your side. Molly has no intention of stopping her attack as she tries to break free from Albert's arms. Ouch. She bit him hard in the shoulder, but Albert held her tightly in pain. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Bite as much as you want. Even though it hurts, I feel excited because it's you. Yeah, I have a you know, being eaten fetish. That's how much I love you. Huh? Why are you licking my blood? Like a vampire. Soon Molly's pupils return to their original color, and she collapsed in Albert's arms. Okay, so it, conveniently, I guess, if she drinks his blood, she returns to normal. That's how he learned about the blood thing, I guess. Great. It's back to the usual Molly. Is it because you licked my blood? This is exactly the same as the book says. Albert holding up the sleeping Molly and picked up the phone. Sleep tight, my dear. I'll help you rest. Or I'll help you with the rest. By hiding the bodies, by the way. Albert looked at Molly, still asleep, and gently pushed her hair away. Poor baby. He opened a heavy book by his bedside. A rule passed down from the generation to generation in the Claus family, which also contains the family's history. I thought mermaids and human descendants were just fairy tales, but it is true. I finally figured out why everyone in our family is so good at water sports. Hmm. I don't know, I, my mind has been irre irreversibly corrupted by the internet because when I think water sports, I think of something else. But anyway, <laughs> but yeah, everyone's good at like swimming, I guess, in this family. Uh, Albert turned to one of the pages of the curse their mermaid ancestors have placed on the invaders. To let the selfish humans feel the same pain, the descendants of the invaders will go berserk if their beloved ones are killed or seriously hurt. Hmm, okay. 
that's okay. So the, the the humans were cursed. Yeah, the ones that like invaded the island. If they're not treated or leave the island, they will go berserk until they die, and only the blood of the Claus family's members will can be uh, soothed to the berserk state. Hmm. What a weird curse. Because it kind of like doesn't that um encourage the invaders to kill more of the family members? I feel like I don't know. Ah, weird. Uh, and for complete healing, a uh, copulation <laughs> with. Turns out you need you guys need to have sex. Turns out you know just having sex solves everything. Actually, how convenient! Just have sex. Um. Anyway, uh, for complete healing, copulation with adult class family bloodlines required. <laughs> it requires the whole hearted love of both parties to prove that the sins of the cursed party are forgiven. Hmm. What a what a weird curse. I can't believe you're the descendant of those people. Is it fate? Go berserk until they die. Damn it! Why does it have to be you? You're so innocent. How can you let you? How can I let you leave me? If my blood can't heal, I can heal you. I'll give you all of it. But I need to stay here until I reach adulthood. The Klaus family line cannot leave Snowflake Island before they reach adulthood because of the mermaid's physiology. Otherwise, they'll die. Is that how it works? They're like half mermaid people, I guess somehow. What a bullshit physique! If I'm gonna heal you. I must endure without you. Also, I need you to love me with all my of all your heart. Okay, so I imagine that's why the normal ending doesn't work. You know, even if they have sex in the normal ending, you know, even if they have sex in general, you know, I guess it wouldn't work. Anyway, uh, Albert gently stroked Molly's face. I always thought that as long as I stayed by your side, always protected you, always loved you, that'd be fine. As long as the person who stays by your side is me, I'm satisfied. But what would it take me? But what would it take to make you love me with all your heart? Molly, what if you don't like me? I can't even imagine what life would be like without you. Young Master, did you call me? Greg, is the exchange program our family sponsored before still available? Yes. Didn't Molly say she wanted to visit an outside design school? Let her go. But Young Master, you cannot follow. Your body will... I know. If I could... I would certainly like to keep her with me. However, because of the curse on her, it is not appropriate for her to stay here for the time being. It is the only way to protect her. Also, I need to always know her state and physical condition. You know, always, you know, always, always like, um, you know, invade her privacy. Never let her have a moment of privacy ever. I will send my blood to the doctor there regularly so she can have it in case she needs it. I understand. Don't worry, my Molly. I will help you arrange everything. The college you go to, the place you work, the place you live, and the day you return to me. No matter where you are, I'll take care of you. Until the day I see you again, I'll let you fall in love with me wholeheartedly. But let's not separate again. Hmm. A little manipulative. <laughs> you know, I feel like it's supposed to be romantic, but like I feel like it's a little manipulative, you know. He literally controls every aspect of her life to like... Uh, manipulate her to fall in love with him, right? That's the idea. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. Um, even though it has, like, good intentions and everything, I don't know. It's a little bit creepy. <sighs> but whatever. Who cares? Uh, you know, it, you know, considering the supernatural, you know, uh, circumstances, I guess. You know, it's like, whatever. Uh, after seeing this page, I finally can resist closing the diary. Otherwise, my tears will stain the entire diary. Wait. I couldn't stop st uh, sobbing. My chest was suffocating with pain. Big dummy, Albert. I didn't even know he did so much for me. Why? He has always loved me like this, giving love to a monster like me. Hey, isn't that great? There's that sound again. A sound that emanates from my body. What do you want from me? Why don't we just use him? Then I could come out as, mu as much as I want. Shut up! Would you dare hurt him, you monster? It was his ancestor who made you this way. And he was the one who trapped you and drugged you. You know, when you put it that way. Is that really love? Shut up. Stop talking. I've had enough. I'd rather just disappear if I have to live like this. At least this time I'll be protecting Albert. I broke the vase next to the bed, casually picked up a sharp piece, and stabbed it in my wrist. However, the pain did not come as expected. He just came in the room just in time. Because a fragment stabbed Albert's palm. You know, somehow. What, where, did he, where did he come from? Uh, 
I mean, I guess he heard the noise. I heard the. I can't speak. I guess he heard the noise. No way, honey. Do you want to leave me? I'll put your hand. He pulled the shard away as if it were natural, and blood gushed out in large quantities. This is your medicine. What a waste. I hurriedly tore off a part of the quilt and wrapped it around his hand. Are you insane? Leave me alone. You're the one who's insane. You can't do this. You can't leave me. What are you talking about? I can't let you get hurt again. So what? He grabbed my hand hard. I would rather be in pain than have you leave me. Molly, don't you understand? I can't live without you. Since the day I met you, you've been the only one in my world. I would do anything for you. Who cares about this injury? Even if you don't like me, I won't let you go. I'll always let you stay with me no matter what. Even if you don't want to, even if it makes you hate me. His voice shook slightly, and his eyes were full of tears. Please, don't leave me, okay? Was he always this upset? Albert is such a big dummy. You don't trust me, right? How can I not like you? You're only one in my world, too. Because everyone else is you know, either has been, you know, uh, tricked into liking her or dead. Or like, not tricked, or, you know, pretending to like her, rather. Uh, when the whole world abandoned me, you were only one who stayed by my side. You're also the most important person to me. But what if I accidentally let you lose your life? What would I do without you? I'll be fine. I won't leave you alone. How can it be fine? I read your diary. I know all about it. You always use your blood to bring me back to my original state. You'll die when you use it all up. I don't want to see you hurt again. You should no longer be with a monster like me. I wrote back the covers and planned to get out of there. I should run away. I should run far away for his sake. No. Molly, you said you love me, right? I said it. Why do you still not believe me? Albert suddenly pushed me down the bed and kissed me. Okay, here's the, here's here comes the segs. Um, there, there isn't any like, you know, <laughs> you know, any explicit scenes, are there? Uh, if we're in love, it's okay to do such things, right? You know, as long as I have consent, right? <laughs> this is fine. Wait, what are you doing? Open your mouth. As I was about to open my mouth to refute, he pushes hot tongue in as I was dizzy from it. Are we gonna go Fifty Shades of Grey here or something? I don't know. Um. I thought I ever read that book, but I guess, I mean, you know, I always hear about the memes about it, you know. It's kind of like a representative of, like, a lot of, like, trashy romance, erotica novels, um, whose main demographic is <laughs> adult women. But anyway, uh, I didn't want to do it, or I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to do it with you in this situation, but I couldn't just let you go. Prove it to me if you really love me. And for complete healing, just have sex, by the way. Is it because of that? The more he kissed, the more intense the kiss became. Where the lips, ears, neck, and the most sensitive parts of my body, he did not let go as epic music plays. Epic music. I, I couldn't help falling into his touch and kisses and gave up the struggle. I just remember him calling my name over and over and saying I love you. In a space that smells sweet and bloody, and there's blood everywhere by the way, uh, we were entangled in each other, not letting go of each other's bodies for a moment. Fade to black so I don't get banned, please. One week later, one week later of constant 24-7 sex. No, no. Anyway, uh, one week later, December 24th. The sound of birds outside the window woke me up. It's morning. Okay. Oh, he's topless. It's fine, right? It, no, it's like, oh, well, uh, it, I mean, obviously, it's kind of like a double standard, isn't it? You know, guys can be topless, but girls can't. But anyway, uh, honey, don't go. I look at Albert, who is still sleeping beside me. I couldn't help but laugh. You're looking like a baby. Since that night, uh, that voice has not been heard again. You know, simply fix... <laughs> I mean, this sounds bad, but like, simply fix uh, mental illness. Well, it's not really mental illness. It's a curse. Anyway. I was just gonna say, you know, simply uh, fix, you know, fix her by simply having sex. You know, it's kind of a weird moral of the story here, but don't worry about it. Um, since that night, that voice has not been heard again. Even without Albert's blood, I do not appear to be in a frenzy. And most importantly, the fragmented memories of being a monster are becoming increasingly blurred, and even the residual sense of guilt has gradually disappeared. And so the curse has been lifted from me. Isn't that great? 
Also, I'm getting a phone call. I'm assuming it is, yeah, probably a spam call. I don't recognize the number, so. Uh, honey, what are you thinking? Sorry, did I wake you up? I woke up immediately because you were not in my arms. You're exaggerating. Do we need to be together 24 hours a day for you to feel at ease? Really? You willing to stick with me 24 hours a day? That's not what I mean. You still remember this is our first date tonight, have you? Of course I remember. I need to go out and prepare first. What to prepare? This giant, uh, that giant chocolate cake? What? You. Oops. How did you know? I'm just guessing. Liar. I knew you were stalking me. By the way, by the way, this, you know, again, kind of like creepy because he's been stalker this entire time. I guess for slightly good reasons, but also still. <laughs> uh, damn it, I was planning to give you a big surprise. You're a big dummy. You're a big baka. Hey, please don't go. Albert scrambled to pull me back into bed with a cute puppy-like expression. You know, it's fine because he's hot, by the way. You know, all these, like, double standards, you know, if he was, like, ugly, you know, it would all be super creepy, but it's fine because he's hot. <laughs> anyway, uh, don't be mad. I was super happy knowing you were preparing a cake for me. I have also prepared gifts and surprises for you. I'm sure you'll love it. Are you still mad at me? So, what should I do so you won't get mad? Have more hot sex, I guess. Uh, it's fine. I think the boobs are covered. Don't get me banned, please. Uh, he took me in his arms and gave me a kiss. Oh, how about this? I finally can resist his handsomeness and cuteness. Uh, or sh I should say, who couldn't forgive him? You're too crafty. You look super cute, even with an angry face, you know. How about we continue until you're not angry? Continue with what? You know what I mean. <laughs> Next, uh, he kissed me again. Molly, you must promise me you'll never leave my side. I promise you. I can't leave you either. I'm so happy. You're finally mine. I love you. Best and a Merry Christmas. Okay, there you go. Oop. I guess that's it. That's the game. Oh, well, there's a little bit more, actually. Uh, Mysterious Boy, by the way, who appeared that one time. I guess there's a little bit more. A young man stood on a cliff not far away and quietly watched the loving couple. Um, like a voyeur, by the way? <laughs> what? This is kind of weird. Hmm. And then they lived happily ever after. Something like that. Oh, the wolf says rar. The man stroked a purple-red wolf next to him. You think so too, right? The prince really designed a perfect trap. The girl didn't notice that everything was too much of a coincidence. Is love too blind, or is that young master too clever? In any case, his love for her has finally been rewarded. It's finally over. The human race really is difficult to control. Although this is only one of them. Roar. The purple red wolf seems dissatisfied. You said I was too much in charge? I admit it. The gods should not interfere too much in the affairs of the human world. I have to pay attention next time. Then, whose curse will it be next time? Now who else needs to have sex? In order to lift the curse, I guess. The moral of the story. You know, defeat curses. With dick. No, um. The story of the Christmas Butcher comes to an end for now. But the story of the Snowflake Island is still ongoing. Okay, a little bit of like a little stinger, I guess. In case the developer wants to make like a sequel or something. I don't know. There you go, best ending. Oops, I think I clicked a bit too soon, but I think it was just it was just gonna fade out anyway. All right, there you go. Um, all right. Um, yeah, a little cheesy at the end there, to be honest. It went a little bit overboard with the whole like smooch, 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 smooch. You know, it's like as it turns out, you need to be together and love each other, and then you'll get your happy ending. It's like, it's like a Disney ending, isn't it? Right, a like Disney movie ending. I tend not to like that too much, but whatever, it's fine. It's just a little cheesy, is so. all. Uh, but yeah, overall though, pretty interesting story, right? So it's kind of like a, a little bit of a bait and switch, a little bit. He's still a bit of a creepy stalker, but I think the idea is like, yeah, we thought he was going to be like the, the crazy guy who kills everyone. But as it turns out, he, that was not him. It was us, actually. It was the protagonist that was the one who was killing people. Also, oh, <laughs> that's weird. I think the main menu like loops like that for some reason. It's kind of weird like that. I have to click in order to make sure it doesn't do that. Anyway, um... But yeah, interesting story. Um, 
definitely built a lot of suspense. Uh, it kind of, I, I feel like though, I, I don't know how I feel about using this word now because of what happened, but I feel like the, the story did climax <laughs> a little bit too early though. You know, the whole thing where she was in the basement, right? She killed a bunch of people and you, you learned that she goes crazy and all that. I think it, I don't know. At that point, I feel like the, the story should have ended a little bit faster, I feel like. I think it dragged on a little bit too long, trying to explain the whole mermaid curse and everything. And in fact, they, if they're going to explain that, that, again, they should have done it a little bit earlier, I feel like. Instead of like having it put at the end, because it did feel like a little bit too much exposition. It was a little bit too um, convenient, I guess. A little bit contrived to say that, oh, by the way, you know, this was all caused by a curse. And turns out the Klaus family was... A uh, half mermaid, and there's this whole thing that caused her to do that, and da 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 da. You know, I was like a little bit too, too, um, I don't know, again, too contrived. You know, everything was just set up to be to be such the case that uh, it was all like wrapped up at the end because they have sex, you know, but anyway, whatever. Um, yeah, again, a little bit too cheesy there at the end, but uh, anyway, I do again, still interesting story. Still enjoyed it though, I guess. Um, I'm just trying to think. Um, obviously the the images, you know, the the art definitely looks nice. Um, uh, what else? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I like the different choices they can make as well and everything. I actually wonder how what, what happened the bad ending though in the, the the second bad ending anyway. Apparently, when she walked out of the window or the balcony rather, and then she was murdered, I guess. For some reason maybe maybe she was killed by sharon maybe maybe that's what it was or something maybe well she, it was confirmed that she was imagining things right and the voice that was it was confirmed to be her maybe maybe she, well, maybe she went crazy and actually killed someone i'm not sure so i, I think it only triggers is someone she knows or someone she likes is injured right that that, that don't, that's the only time it activates you know again like super sane mode <laughs> it's just funny maybe that you know maybe that's like a good thing though you know maybe, it's kind of like a self defense, uh, like an automatic self defense system <laughs> in a way. Uh, I don't know. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Again, let's see. Uh, if there's any like criticisms, I, I would definitely say. I mean, for one, the translation could use a bit of work, to be honest. Uh, it was better than I expected, but still some weird, like, nay, like, word choices. You know, this is, this is usual. I feel like anytime that someone translates, like, like Chinese or Japanese, like English, like uh, if you're not like a native English speaker, they always use like weird words to translate, you know, like w weird word choices and uh, weird tenses as well. Sometimes they use the wrong tense. I feel like, again, I think this game was in Japanese though, but there is, I think, a Chinese version too. No, it says here like a Chinese version, yeah. It's so strange because I see some background images using Japanese language, but there is a Chinese version of this game. I don't know if this game was originally in Chinese, I think so. If that's the case, you know. It would explain it. I think I mentioned it before, but how like uh, present tense, past tense, future tense, it doesn't exist in the Chinese language. It's very contextual. So, you know, when you translate directly to English, you know, sometimes if uh, the translator isn't skilled enough to realize that, uh, you know, they might miss a few things. It, it just uh, reads weirdly to like an English speaker. But, you know, besides that, it was pretty good, I think. Uh, I think I understood just the story. And, uh, yeah, I mean, anything else would be definitely... It, it is a little rough, though. The the UI, though, doesn't look bad, though. Like, actual, like, art and, like, design of the UI isn't bad. It's just, uh, I think, the coding, you know, the programming. For some weird reason, like, the transition sometimes, transitions too fast. I don't know, it's just my computer. I'm not sure, but sometimes, uh, yeah, the, 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 sometimes transitions a little bit too quickly or, like... Um, like the music, you know, cuts abruptly and everything, you know, I feel like they should add like, you know, just small things, the small things you should just do to make it feel more professional, well, for example, to fade out the music, you know, every time you transition to a scene, you fade out the, the music or whatever, um, whenever you transition to a different scene, you don't like cut it like, too quickly, uh, sometimes you gotta have establishing shots, you know, you kind of, you know, visual novels, the more I think about it, actually, they're kind of like, like TV shows, right? They're kind of like movies and TV shows. So there's a little bit of like knowledge you need to use from actually like, um, you know, recording like a TV show that you actually have to apply to like uh, visual novels. Just like writing as well. Writing is writing visual novels, at least the ones I like to read anyway. They're kind of like screenplays when you think about it, you know? That's why I always have a criticism. Not, not in this game, but in, in other games, I feel like in other visual novels, when they're written more like books, that feels weird, right? 
I'm more used to like visual novels that are written like screenplays. I think it makes more sense when you do it like that. Anyway, um, but there you go. Uh, Fred's maybe a Rempy. Yeah, pretty good. I know that again, the overall art though is pretty good. Um, I gotta say, it's just like little rough things here and there, but uh, otherwise, yeah. You know, I was expecting, you know, apparently the, there's the whole thing of the Claus family, right? And we didn't see much of Liam, by the way. He was kind of like just a background character that appeared out of nowhere. He seemed like important. You know, maybe the developer is thinking of like a sequel involving uh, Liam, right? That was the name of yeah, his, his brother anyway. Liam and Ithra. They, they appear like very briefly. But I was thinking, you know, the whole Claus family thing. I was thinking like they had something to do with Santa Claus, you know? But like there's going to be like a Santa Claus kind of thing going on. I don't know how they would, uh, you know, how it would work in the story, but I thought I thought it was gonna be like a, I don't know, Santa Claus murderer, you know, he was the Santa Claus killer or something, but no, uh, I guess they didn't go in that direction at all, which makes me wonder why they even have that, you know, last name. It's just a red herring, I guess. It had nothing to do with Santa Claus at all, actually. Oh, anyway, um, oh, there you go. I, I I think those are all my thoughts. I think that's all the endings as well. I think it got all the endings. It's like four endings in total, I believe. So there you go. I guess that's it for Please Don't Hate Christmas. Um, I guess if you're watching this on YouTube, on the video, then if you want to see more content, then you can click on the subscribe button below the, the video to see more. Uh, and if you want to catch me live, actually, you can actually click on it again and then click on the bell, change it to all to get notified whenever I go live. And, you know, uh, and hopefully next time I stream, I won't accidentally like not go live and actually go live next time, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> but all right. Thanks for watching. Until next time. See you then.